to our awesome science classes. I'm so glad you guys are joining us again today for a bug's life all week. And we have been looking at insects the past two days. And today we are looking at some pill bugs or roly poly bugs, which interestingly enough are not insects. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit. And today we're gonna to put on our entomologist hats. We're gonna learn about the study of bugs and how we study bugs as we develop a really fun experiment to do. And we're gonna see who's there with us and shout outs in just a minute. I'm gonna go over the things you need. So if you didn't know we were doing roly polies today, you can go and grab those supplies. Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel, our Facebook, our Instagram. We have lots of info up there, lots of awesome projects if you haven't been following us all along. And of course you can support us at patreon.com slash rosy research. So what we need today, you need some subjects which are gonna be our little pill bugs. I've collected some pill bugs. They're super easy to find. If you go dig up some rocks, usually you can find them under there. You're gonna want some scissors so that we can make our stuff. I've got some cereal boxes for cardboard so that I can make my experimental apparatus where I'm gonna test it at. I also have my glue gun and some hot glue just in case I decide I need that. And I had tape, oh yeah, I have some tape too. So just some building supplies. And then today we're gonna look at how much pill bugs like wet environments versus dry environments. So I have like a pretend paper towel, this is like a reusable paper towel thing and some water so that we can add some water to our environment. And then scientists love to collect data. So we are going to collect data. I have this great fun little book. We're gonna have some graph paper where we can plot how the pill bugs react in our experiment. Do they like the dry? Do they like the wet? If I don't take data, I won't actually know the answer. So we're gonna take some data on that too. And that is all you need today, which is pretty easy. Tomorrow we're gonna make water walkers. So if you wanna get prepared for that, you need some like floral wire, thin wire, paper clips, like the twisty ties, those types of things will work for one. That's okay. I, I love them. I, we have some really cool facts about pill bugs. You guys are gonna be the experts. It's gonna be amazing. Um, so the first thing we'll do, because we're gonna take some data over time, we're gonna build our experimental apparatus. And really, I just want a box that I can have two sides on, because my question, I was curious on if pill bugs like it wet or dry. Do they like to be in a wet environment or a dry environment? So what I could do with my box is I could make two environments, one that doesn't have any moisture and one that does. And then I can track over time sort of what happens. So I'm just gonna make a box first. And I have, I'm very lucky, I've got this handy cereal box that I can just hot glue back together if I have a glue stick. And this will allow me to create whatever environment I want. Now you guys at home might be like, um, I'm less curious about if they like wet environments versus cold environments. I'm more curious about if they like light versus dark. Or I'm actually more curious if they like cinnamon or if they like paprika. There's all sorts of things that we could be curious about and that we could build. Georgia just popped in with a question. Um, um, I noticed that when it was raining yesterday mm -hmm. and my sister went to find pilgrims, I helped her and I noticed that they like wet places because there was a lot out when we did that. Interesting. And it was raining just then. Ooh, so George is saying, you know what? It was raining yesterday and all the pill bugs were coming out to play. So she's got a hypothesis. She has a guess. She's saying, I'm pretty sure because I saw those pill bugs out yesterday in the rain, I think they like the wet spots. So that's awesome. Scientists usually want to have a hypothesis or a guess of what's gonna happen so that they can design their experiment. So I real quick just put a cereal box together and then I want two compartments because I want to change things. And I'm gonna make a hole in my compartments too. Let's see if it's this way. So I'm gonna cut a wall for myself so that I can separate a dry side versus a wet side. And I'm gonna make it so that the pill bugs can go from side to side. So they'll be able to choose if they want to be in the wet area or the dry area. So I'm just gonna put this guy straight up and down. So I'll have sort of two compartments and people, the pill bugs can move from compartment to compartment. And that's gonna be really important because if I don't let them go from place to place, I won't be able to find out 
what they like. So I'm going to glue this guy down just like this. Now I've got this cool little tunnel and we'll add some glue here. And we're pretty much ready for our experiment once this glue dries. I'm pretty sure the pill bugs are not strong enough to knock down this wall even though it's sort of what I call precariously glued. They're not going to knock it down. So I'm going to have two sides and scientists we love to label things. Labeling is really important so we don't forget what's going on. So I might tell myself which side is going to be wet versus dry or if you're doing a different experiment Maybe which side has vinegar and which side has water. Maybe they like, you want to know, do they like orange juice? So orange juice over water or whatever experiment you decide to see about what pill bugs like. You're going to write it on one side. So I've got wet on one side for mine. And then I have dry is going to be on the other side. All right. So now when I look at it, I will know immediately which side is which. And then I'm going to, on my wet side, I'm going to take my little spongy thing and I will end up putting water here. I think I'm going to put it down here actually. And then I'll have my pill bugs. I'm going to put half of my pill bugs starting here, half of my pill bugs over here, and we can track over time where they decide to go. And if I want to be really particular, I could even say where I'm going to put my pill bugs. I could draw a circle for like the start. If I wanted to, you could totally do that. And then we are going to add some water onto our little towel. I'm actually just going to dunk it because that's going to be easier. We're going to let it absorb some water. So the wet side will have lots of yummy water, possibly if they like it. And the dry side won't if they don't like it. And we can see what they like by where they decide to go. And before I get this started, I'm actually going to show you guys how we'll make our graph. So I've got Georgia's amazing graph book here. We'll find a new page. And so I want to know how many pill bugs are on each side. And then I'm going to do it as a function of time. So I'm going to look at, at one minute, at two minutes, at three minutes, and we can look. So I'm going to look at the number of pill bugs. I'm going to do it going up here. So maybe there's no pill bugs. One, two, three, and we can go up all the way up. Let's see, which way does seven go? Eight, nine, 10. And I think I have more than 10. So I'm just going to keep going for a little bit. And then this will be my time. So at each time I will take a new data point and I'm going to look at each time. I'm going to look at who's in the dry side and who's on the wet side. And that might be after at initially time T is zero. And then I'll do the same thing. So I'll have dry and wet. And this will be after one minute and I'm getting all set up so that I can take my data and then also tell you guys all about the really cool things that pill bugs have. All right. Three minutes, dry and wet at four minutes. We have a couple more friends who showed up. Ooh, who do we get to say hello to? Griffin. Hi Griffin. We missed you, man. I know. Oh, this will be fun because you get to go dig around in your garden to get the pill bugs. We've also got Max here. Hi, Max! Yay! And Naomi's Yay, here. Yay! Welcome, Naomi! Oh, oh, I love it when our friends and come. Orion's here. And Orion! Welcome! You guys are just in time. All right, so I have my graph set up so I can see what's going to happen. And then I've got my experimental setup ready. Can you show that graph one more time oh, yeah. and explain what each axis is? So this, normally we would label it. I'm sort of out of space. This is going to be my number of pill bugs. So this is my pill bug number. This is pill bugs here. And so what I'm going to do is when we put them in, I'm going to record how many pill bugs went on each side. And so if I put five on each side, they'll both be at five. And then we'll wait a minute and we'll count how many pill bugs are on the wet side how many pill bugs are on the dry side? And then we'll wait one minute more and we'll look at how many pill bugs are on the wet side, how many pill bugs are on the dry side. So we'll get to see this graph change and the way it changes will tell us what they like. If they like a dry environment or a wet environment. And Georgia already has a hypothesis. She thinks they like that wet environment because it rains. Now we can test that and see if she's right. So that's kind of a fun thing. So to get it started, all you have to do 
is add your wet Closer. spot. Maybe I'll add a little bit more water. We don't want it like sopping wet mainly because this is going to be inside of a cardboard box. And we need to add our pill bugs in and we'll have Evan start a timer for us. And I'm gonna put my pill bugs in, so I gotta get five pill bugs into each section. And, and we'll get it started. Timer. Hang on. Ooh, they tickle. Ah! I've lost one. They're escaping. There's these guys are fast. Alright, so I got one, two, three, four, five in this side, and they're in the starting circle. I gotta take away. There's a leaf in here though. It really likes its leaf. We don't want it to get distracted. Whoop, I only got four. Let's get another one in there. All right, I got five on the dry side. Mama, and I'm mama? gonna put five on the wet side. And we're gonna see where they go to. Woo! Oh, they're sticky. It's crawling up my finger. Three, four, oh, that was too many. Oh, no, that's perfect. All right. So we got five. We're going to start the timer. We started with five and five. So on our graph, we're going to start with five of each. So I've got up to five. Let's see. That would be zero, one, two, three, four, five. So here's our five. So each one has five. And you notice Dr. five on Erica, the wet side, five on the dry side. She put them in the circles. I put so them in the circles to start, the starting spot. and they're already moving over. So we're going to see what happens, where they decide to go. And as we wait for that first minute, I want to tell you some cool facts before we count again. One really cool fact. These guys are not related to any other insect in this world. What? They're cousins to the shrimp. They're actually the only crustacean. Yes, I said it. They are crustaceans. They're the only crustacean that lives on land. All right, Evan's giving me the signal that we have one minute going down. So I've got, I still have five on the wet side and five on the dry side. So we're gonna mark that off. We're gonna go five and five again. And we're gonna wait for another minute. Just like this. And we'll see. So that is really cool. They are crustaceans, which is really surprising because I don't know, when I think of crustaceans, I think of like crabs, I think of shrimp. These are all things that live in the ocean, not on land. Interestingly, they are related to that crustacean. They also don't have lungs. So pill bugs actually have gills. What? They're, they have gills and they live on land, which is really cool. And they use those gills to absorb the gases around them, which is probably, I. I think I'm going to second George's hypothesis. Knowing that they have gills, they probably like it to be more wet. Evan's giving me the two minute mark. All right, we're going to count. I have four on the dry side, which means I have six on the wet side. They're actually starting to hide underneath my paper towel. But on the dry side, I have four pill bugs. Interesting, interesting. And on the wet side, I have six pill bugs. Ooh, we're seeing some data come in. Perfect. We're going to keep watching them as we go. Another interesting thing, and Isabella actually found one of these pill bugs the other day, and we were so shocked. We did not know what was going on. It was a half and half pill bug. Like the top half was, I think, dark, and the back half was like a light color. So it was like two different colors of pill bug, which I thought was cool. I was like, I've never seen a pill bug like that. What is going on? Of course, curious minds always want to know. So I looked it up. Turns out it was like a teenage pill bug that was molting. So as it grows, it actually gets rid of its exoskeleton in two chunks. Ooh, I'm getting the next one. All right, I have the three minute mark that just came up. Uh oh, we've got one that escaped the box entirely. All right, the three minute mark, I still have four over here and six over there. So let's give it a check. We're gonna do it again, four over here. There we go and six again all right and hopefully we have no more escapees we'll find out we'll find out um so they can have these half and half colorings which is really cool oh, and um they don't pee 
which is really interesting. I did not know this. Pill bugs don't pee. So normally living things get rid of excess ammonia through their urine. That's how we get rid of that. The pill bugs can actually just get rid of it through their exoskeleton, through their shell. So that's kind of cool that they do that. I'm kind of, I'm interested in that. Pill bugs, oh, wait, I got the four minute mark. All right, let's count. Oh, we have another one that's come over here. George is like finding my escapees. Get in there. All right, we've got one, two, three. Whoop. We have three on the dry side. So that means we got seven on the wet side. So here we go. We're gonna have three on the dry side. And we're gonna have, what did I say, seven on the wet side. Just like that. All right. Ooh, we're seeing, I don't know, I'm seeing some data. Over time, you'll notice one of these is growing while the other one is shrinking. We also have... As long as we can keep them in. Kaya showed up. Ooh, hi, Kaya! And we have Raiden showed up. Yay, Raiden! This and seems like one that Raiden will like. We're Ooh. about to hit. We're about to hit the next one? All right. We're at five. I just watched one. Oh, no, I still have three on this side. Ooh. I still have three on that side. Ooh, let's, um, ooh, no, we're gonna need more space, guys. What are we gonna do? Let's make this, let's turn this into a six. So we can wait an extra minute. Because otherwise, I want to see it. Oh, no, we're running out of space. Make it quick. We'll have to make, like, another graph later. Maybe we'll put it, oh, I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna do. We're gonna figure something out. Because now I only have two over here. Oh, I bet our, I bet our six-minute mark is coming up. Um... All right, so they don't pee. They don't eat living vegetables. So they are not pests in our garden, which some people might think, oh, I wanna get rid of the pill bugs. No, we love the pill bugs because they only eat dead things and they eat heavy metals. They eat metals in our soil that we don't like. So things like copper or zinc or arsenic or lead, all things we don't want around our vegetables, these little guys gobble up. In fact, they eat their poop so they can eat more copper, which is kind of gross. All right, we're at six minutes. So we're gonna do a check. I've got two on this side and eight over there. So now I've got two over here. I don't know, I, for some reason I colored in the box with zero. I'm not sure why I did that, but that's okay. And that would be eight over here. All right. So I'm wondering if we did our next thing at like 10 minutes, how many would be over here assuming they don't escape? because we do have some escapees, but the ones over here are really happy like underneath the paper towel, which is kind of cool to note. Do we so, have any, anybody who has a question about ooh, it? Ooh, George just found one. Yeah, ask your questions if you would like to ask some questions for sure. Vinatia only found slugs and worms in New Jersey. That's okay, Vinatia. You could totally do the same project with slugs or worms. So you could build a little chamber like what we have, and then you could split the chamber in half and say, I wonder, do slugs like salt or do they not like salt? And you could put a whole bunch of salt in one chamber and no salt in the other. Or you could put a whole bunch of water in one chamber and no water in the other. You could check for worms. You could say, I wonder if worms like water. And you could do the same thing, dry versus wet. And you could see over time where they go. You could do this with any insect, any bug, like worms, all of those things. You could use the same experimental apparatus to test different types of bugs. So that's kind of cool. Ooh, I only have one on this side now. So that means I'm at nine and one, and it's only taken, ooh, maybe seven and a half minutes. I can't graph it anymore. If you're at home, you could do a better job graphing and extend your access, your axis, because then we could get further. But I am looking at it, and it looks like I only have one over there which is really cool. <laughs> I think Georgia was right with her hypothesis of seeing the pill bugs come out in the rain. She was right. They seem to like the wet. In fact, I think we could even think about this further of thinking, where do I find pill bugs? Because normally I need to flip over a rock where it's dark and moist to find pill bugs. And then Georgia said she found them crawling around outside when it was raining. And now I'm finding, hmm, as time goes on, those pill bugs are very happily going over to the side that's more wet. So pill bugs must like a more wet environment. 
this is how scientists come to their conclusions and how we sort of further knowledge. Because right now, we could actually look up the answer. You could go to the internet and say, do pill bugs like to be in wet environments? And the internet would probably come back and say, yes, they do. And the reason why they do is because they have gills and all of that good stuff. However, sometimes there's a question that we literally do not have an answer to. Like, you can't look it up in Google. You can't go ask a friend. Like, nobody has ever figured it out. And in that situation, you'd have to make an experiment like this. Like, at one point, someone didn't know if pill bugs liked wet environments or dry. Somebody couldn't look it up in a book. They couldn't look it up on the internet. And so you design this experiment, and then you do it a whole bunch of times to make sure that it wasn't just a random incident that happened. And then you write a paper and you say, pill bugs do like wet environments. Look at my graph. And then people say that, oh, pill bugs do like wet environments. Look at that graph. They have the graph and they can show it. And that is how science comes about. In fact, if you decide to go get your PhD someday, that's exactly what you have to do. You have to find an answer to something that literally nobody has ever done before. You have to increase the amount of human knowledge that is in this world. And that is what that is. Awesome. Wait, that was fun. Yeah. Do you think someone could do a test of if pill bugs liked Oreos versus saltine crackers? I think that sounds like a delicious test because it sounds like you might have access. You might have to eat those Oreos. Darn. If the pill, you only put one Oreo oh, down, it leaves the rest of the package. True story. You could just test like Oreos versus Cheetos. Because I like Cheetos. So. Then you have to have an Oreos package and a Cheetos package. You put some Cheetos on one side, Oreos on the other, and you can see. Or dry leaves versus just pick leaves. Yes. That is a great one, too. Do they like dry leaves or fresh leaves? And you might think, you might be able to form a hypothesis about that, about something I said earlier of that pill bugs are not pests. They don't eat living plants. Now, granted, a picked leaf is no longer living, but you might be able to say, hmm, if they don't eat living plants and they like to eat dead things, which one's more dead? Which one seems more like the buffet they want to eat? And you could make a hypothesis and then you could test it in a chamber just like this. In fact, testing it in chambers like this is cool. It can go on all day. I mean, you can test anything. Do they like chocolate chips? Do they like cookies? Do they like salt? Do they like baking soda? Do they like flour? Like, hmm, I wonder. What things do they like and what things don't they like? And all you have to do is have a chamber like this and you can just set it up each time and just wait probably about 10 minutes to see, give them some time to make a choice and check it out. And then we'll find out. I'm noticing that the, actually one came back over here, but I'm also noticing there are pill bugs in like all the little corners and crevices. So I wonder, do they prefer tight spaces? Maybe I should make one that doesn't have any crevices on one side and is like a little maze where they can cozy on up to all the corners on the other and see, do they prefer the maze with the cozy corners or do they prefer being out in the open? What I'm seeing now is, I don't think they prefer being out in the open. Just a guess. And I could test that, which is really cool. And that's what we're doing today. What? We're building the box and we're checking to see what they like. And I'm curious what you guys are building and what you guys are testing. Because, I mean, Venetia was slugs. Was it Venetia that did slugs? Yes. Well, I don't I'm, know if she did this. She said that's um, all they had is worms and slugs. I'm really curious of, like, what kind of thing. Slugs could be a little slimy. Worms seem a little less slimy. I don't know. Maybe banana slugs. I mean, Maybe ants. Maybe ants. Yeah. You could do any. Any insect you find. Centipedes would be great. Mm. Ants could be really interesting. Because with ants, you could do this and actually try to find the things they don't like. So that if you ever had ants coming into your house, you would know, hmm, should I put cinnamon down? Should I put ginger down? Should I put vinegar down? Should I put water down? How do I make it so ants don't like being around my house? Do they like garlic? I don't know. That sounds like a test worth millions of dollars. Uh, you know, it is a test worth millions of dollars. People have spent millions of dollars trying to figure that out. Mm -hmm. You could, of course, probably look that up on the internet. But that kind of takes the fun out of the science. Because right now, you don't know. And if you develop a test to find out, you have personally, by yourself, increased your own knowledge, which is kid PhD worthy. Totally. Not going to lie. That maybe, would be pretty incredible. Maybe ants really don't like shredded lavender leaves. And maybe you find something totally nobody new. Knows. Totally yeah, knows. nobody knows. Anyhow, I'm excited to see what you guys made over in Zoom. Short little class today. 
Um, and I'm excited to see, hear about what you're finding because hopefully you've started your test and maybe we can even watch it go during Zoom today. And tomorrow we are gonna look at surface tension of water, which is gonna be fun because some bugs can actually walk on water. I can't, pretty sure you can't. Why can some bugs walk on water? Hmm, we're gonna learn all about that. What's the difference between them and me? Because I think that would be fun to walk on water, but I can't. So we'll learn about that and we'll learn about some things that change surface tension that we've talked about in the past few weeks, which will be kind of fun too. And you'll have a cool little bug. And then on Friday, we are making a circuit bug that's gonna buzz around the table if you happen to have an extra vibrating motor. And if not, we'll have cute little light up eyes to it. So it's gonna be fun. It'll be great alt scar, ugh. great art sculpture to that. All right, so we will see all of our friends over in Zoom. If you don't have the info on getting over into Zoom, you can check it out. You can get it at patreon.com slash rosyresearch, which also gives you sort of the schedule for everything that's going on, all of the supplies, all the materials, any printouts that we might use. And um, make sure you like our video, subscribe to our YouTube, check out our Facebook and Instagram, and we will see you guys and Tiny Dancer in just a minute in Zoom. Have a good afternoon, friends. Bye. Bye.